at the beginning of her um, previous video series that I did, she admitted that she was a lesbian. Okay? Shit. Somebody's going to have to tell my boyfriend. But to stand there and try to make it seem like, oh, if I just throw a plus on there, a problem solved. He even did like a camp imp- Am I that camp, guys? Guys, I'm not that camp. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Now, as a sceptic who covers topics within religious spheres, I'm not immune to or surprised by a little bit of backlash from time to time. Sometimes I think people feel, especially if you're absorbing a lot of sceptic content, if you're absorbing this kind of community as a whole, you can feel a little bit hard done by, especially as a Christian. You might feel like you're being picked on sometimes, and that is completely understandable. This is part of the reason that I'm always very happy to see Christians in my YouTube comments. It makes me feel like I'm doing a, a relatively good job at distinguishing between a church, an organization, and its followers. When we talk about a dangerous church or a dangerous idea, it's the followers that we're trying to protect. That being said, if I talk about an organization or an idea that I think is harmful or silly, usually harmful and silly, there's always going to be someone who's not super happy. If we do a video talking about young earth creationism, then a young earth creationist might get upset and do a show about you. A religious flat earther might make a two hour live stream immediately after your video goes live. And nobody's got time for that. <laughs> this is all to say I am not a stranger to and not offended by being debunked, being responded to. I've seen a couple of these. Sometimes they're kind of funny. Some of them probably make a lot of good points. In general, a person tends to respond to something on a topic that is important to them. If they firmly believe and advocate for the idea that the Earth is 6,000 years old, that is the topic that they're interested in. That's what they're going to debunk me on. I have never, <laughs> I have never until this day had someone as a Christian, in their words, specifically as a Christian, debunk a comedy video of mine. <laughs> this is new territory! I'm debating whether or not to include their channel name, because they have a very, very small channel, the video has zero likes on it at present, and I don't want to inadvertently flood them with hate. So my general rule of thumb for when somebody is this small is to not really mention their name. However, they have made a lot of videos responding to me, and I get the impression that what they want is a response from me. So let's just do this one. I won't mention his name, the channel name. If he wants to jump in and say, that's me, that's my channel, come over here and watch it, then he can do that in the comments section if he wants to. I think that's the fairest way of doing this. So yeah, this is a, this is a video debunking my stupid Cora questions video, which if you've seen, if you've not seen it, it's very funny and very good. So you should watch it before we watch this debunking video. Pause this video, go and watch that video, and then come back. It's very short. I've done a couple of Cora videos now, so this is specifically in response to my why Noah built Ark in 40 days and other stupid questions. Now I can see how somebody could read this title and think it was a response to like stupid Christian questions or something, but it's not. It's questions uh, asked on Quora, which is basically Yahoo Answers. So it provides kind of a good uh, grounds for entertainment. So I made an eight minute video just picking out a bunch of my favorite questions and answering them in a silly, jokey way, making making jokes, making humour. It is a, a comedy video, is how I would describe it. Here's the description of this video. Welcome back to my channel. Well, I found out when I watched this video, there really wasn't much to it. <laughs> so I'm pretty confident that he thought this was going to be like some kind of like atheist versus Christians video and then discovered that actually it was just me doing stupid jokes for eight minutes. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> so it is only one part long. Only one part. This video is 40 minutes. Just over 40 minutes long. For an eight minute comedy video. And I want to take the piss out of that, but then that's my channel. <laughs> so I don't really have a leg to stand on. So this is fine, it's good. He got a lot of worth out of that eight minutes of mine. As I could answer most of the questions better than she did. And I'm wondering what better means in this context. Because again, it was, co it was for comedy. Granted, most of them were for comedic effect. I don't know why that's in quotation marks. It was for comedic effect. It wasn't for comedic effect. 
It was for, for comedy. Or played up. No, just the first one. But as a Christian, I felt that many of the questions she answered needed to be answered better. So here we are. Smash that like button! <laughs> Yo, if you enjoy this video, smash that fucking like button. Smash that like button. Destroy the subscribe button. Explode the comment section with your thoughts. There's just something, I know, maybe it's mean. There's something really funny about a video with no likes on a channel with virtually no subscribers being like, as a Christian, I didn't like this comedy. Smash that like button. I don't, there's something really funny about that. Does that make me a mean person? <laughs> Let's just see. I have no idea what this is going to entail. They thought they could answer the questions better than me, so... Whatever, let's go. The channel name, by the way, which, again, I'm not going to say. The channel name and the sort of series title. Because, again, I, th I think the reason that it's so bizarre that he's like, oh, it turned out there wasn't much to this video, so there's only one part. The reason that I think is so weird is because he responds to, like, all of my videos. Or at least a lot of them. I don't know why. He just, like takes such issue with me that he watches all of my content, so thanks for the views, man. I don't... I'm, I don't get it, personally. I watch stuff I like on YouTube. I guess I watch this as well, but this is work for me, so it counts. The title of the channel is to do with movies. The title of this series is... says, like, so-and-so plays games. I don't understand what responding to my commentary videos has to do with movies and games. <laughs> Just all in all, very confusing to start with. Okay. Emma Thorne questions debunked. 40 minutes, let's go, baby. This included a fair use notice. Maybe this is 40 minutes of the Hello video. Hello, and welcome oh, no, here back he to my channel. My name is Russ, and as you can see, I am sitting in front of my movie corner. I have my King of Kings movie next to me, my Godfather t-shirt on, and judging by the frame around me, we are taking down another atheist. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Emma Thorne. I'm wearing my mushroom t-shirt. I got my uh, Mass Effect art on the wall. And today we're going to take down another Christian. <laughs> this is the next one of my Emma Thorne series. Um, this was... Whole series, just for me. Just for taking down atheist Emma Thorne. It was a video that I saw come across my feed right as I was kind of getting towards the end of the Emma Thorne video. And I thought this one might be interesting to take down. It's called Why Noah Built the Ark in 40 Days. It's not called that. It's called... Why Noah built Ark in 40 days? And other stupid questions. Basically, um, I, this video is only about 8 minutes and 21 seconds, but honestly... It's 8 minutes and 22 seconds. Sorry, carry on. Honestly, us. after her introduction, the whole thing is only about 5 minutes long, because, I mean, some of the answers, some of the questions, she only gives like one or two word answers for. And so, um, you know, this one I'm probably going to be able to do in uh, one session. <laughs> Um, mostly because I'm going to be able to debunk most everything that she says pretty quickly and effectively. I don't understand how you debunk a joke. <laughs> let's find out. Come on, man. So, Get to um, it. without any further ado, let's jump into this Please. and then we'll just kind of go through it and hopefully it won't take us very long. Gosh, I hope. Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Just kidding. I mean, you knew that. My American accent has gotten a lot better since then, I feel, and now it's even cringier to watch. You think my American accent now is cringy? The further we go back, the worse it will get. That because most of you are American and that was probably horrendous. I've just started learning the basics of- Okay, so basically she kind of talks a little bit about um, the uh, American language and she kind of talks about some different things. So, we're gonna move forward here just a tiny bit. And let's go. Supernatural, let's go. philosophical, don't worry. So basically what she did was is she went to Quora and she kind of searched around for some different questions that she could kind of throw up on the... No, I know he's watched the video because he knows what I talked about in the bit that he skipped. I didn't search around Quora. I very specifically... Um, picked out the questions that come to my inbox. The whole, like, joke of it is that ever since I looked on it, like, one time, now, like, twice a week, I get emails from Cora with these ridiculous questions. So whenever a funny one comes up in my emails, I save it. And I save them up for a video. So it's a weird thing to either get wrong or lie about. Don't really get it. I guess it makes me seem meaner if I'm, like, looking for stupid people on Cora. I don't know. The screen and answer. 
I have well, the answers. That was self-evident. Or at least I have answers. <laughs> so let's just dive right in. Did you know that LGBT is prohibited by God? Everyone, we're moving to Q+. Problem solved. No. The seriousness of Russ's face. No. It's a joke, Russ. It's a joke. Because the, the question says only LGBT. So I said, don't worry, we'll all go into queer. And then we're not... Ha ha ha. It's just a, it's a joke about the letters they chose to include in the question. How is, how is this going to be... Let's just see. Because it is... It is prohibited by God. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you throw a plus on there. Because it's still prohibited by God. Now, at the beginning of her... Um, previous video series that I did, okay, Christian School Textbooks Debunked, she admitted... He did a whole... He did a whole series debunking that one video of mine. ...that she was a lesbian, okay? Shit. Somebody's gonna have to tell my boyfriend. I definitely... I, how is this guy watching so much of my content and yet just getting it so wrong? Is he lying or is has he got some sort of issue? Maybe he genuinely has, like, a memory issue. I'm not a <laughs> I know, I wear, like, lesbian shirts and I have the short hair. Um, and I am queer. I'm- I'm a bisexual, my friend. There's, like, there's so many videos where I'm, like, holding- this videos fairly recently near this one that he's talking about where I've got, like, the bi pride flag in the background. Either way, I guess I'm prohibited by God. Um, but again, my answer to this question was a joke about the letters in this question. No. Because it is prohibited by God. Why do they always turn out to be, um, homophobes? Do you think that's why they take issue with me? Because I look like a lesbian? Is that- have we just cracked the code? Oh my gosh. Not judging. That's her thing. It's her lifestyle. She can have it if she wants. It's not a lifestyle. We don't mind the people, we just hate the lifestyle. This harkens back to the days when homophobes like this were accusing all gay people, it was mostly gay men I think at this point, of like cruising and uh, being really involved in drugs and crazy nightlife and all this kind of thing. That's what this whole lifestyle harkens back to. Now it is used as a way of saying we hate gay people but we don't hate the people, we're full of love, we just hate them but it's okay because lifestyle. Classic homophobia. But to stand there and try to make it seem like, oh, if I just throw a plus on there, a problem solved. No, it's not. He even did like a camp imp. Am I that camp, guys? Guys, I'm not that camp. <laughs> oh, if I just throw a plus on there, wow. I, I, I'm not judging. Does like weirdly homophobic impression of me. <laughs> Three minutes in. It's gold so far, man. Thank you very much. But it by God. Okay. She claims that, you know, at some point she went to church and, you know, she did all this stuff and they didn't like her lifestyle, so she left. And that's her. What? This guy's just lying. <laughs> Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? He's either lying or he's got some sort of delusional mental disorder. I'm not trying to be an asshole. It's just that the things he's saying that I've said are not true. Like, we're like three for three on stuff that I have said, stuff that I have talked about that is just 100% false. Like, either he's lying and he's not really got the, like, I don't know how to say this, he's not really got the views to sort of benefit from, like, spreading lies about me. Does that make any sense? You know, like a Kent Hovind sort of would. Um, so I don't really get that maybe it is just a problem he has. I'm trying to be understanding here, not an asshole, because God knows I have problems, right? <laughs> but, like, that's, that's not true. I didn't go to church, they didn't like my lifestyle, so I left. I've never been religious. When I was a kid, we had the vicars come into school and we went to church services and I sort of assumed that the baby Jesus was real because we were just told it was. And then as I grew old enough to reason for myself, I didn't believe. When my dad became, this is, you're getting the insider information on me. Russ, this is for you. 
This is the reality of that whatever things you've made up in your head that I've said, this is the truth, okay? This is just for you. You're so welcome. Um, when my dad became a born-again Christian, I was already an adult. And at that point, for him and for our relationship, I went back to the Bible. I reread the Bible. I went to church for him. Uh, I went to his baptism and things like that. And I did find when I went to his church, little old Church of England in a tiny village, he was like the young man of the church at 50 at that point. I definitely felt the judgment and the judgmental looks, but it's not that I at some point was a believer and then I was like, hello, fellow churchgoers, I'm a lesbian. And they were like, oh, we can't be having that. And then I left and became an atheist and here we are. That's just a complete fabrication. How weird. He's just like invented all this stuff about me. This is so strange. This is so much stranger than I expected. And he's made so many videos about me. That's the weirdest part. Like, it would make more sense if he had only watched a little bit of my content and sort of, like, guessed from some of the things that I've said and tried to fill in the blanks. That would make sense. But he's watched so much of me that it doesn't make sense that he's so wrong about my life. <laughs> it's her choice. She's free to make that choice. But why does he sound so angry? She's free to make that choice. Why is he so angry about people's freedom to make choices? She's free to make it, but it is not okay for you to stand there and try to make a light of it. How dare I try to make light of being LGBT? How fucking dare I try to make light of the sexuality that you're born with that you can't help that people discriminate against you for? How dare I try to shine a tiny bit of positivity? on the hatred and discrimination that people face as a result of religion for their sexuality. How fucking dare I? Because, yes, it is prohibited by God. Oh! Was this a sign from heaven? It's one of the little twin stars just fell from heaven. Have I just had a religious experience? No. Are vampires in the Bible? I yeah, it was a joke! Russ, it was a joke! I didn't think something falling off my shelf was actually a religious experience. Maybe he thinks I'm actually that stupid. <laughs> Go back a tiny bit because this is just a funny fell one. from heaven. Have I just had a religious experience? No. Are vampires in the Bible? Uh, let me just check. Uh, oh, uh, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not anymore. Vampires are not real. Okay. I know. Contrary to what. Does Russ think I believe Sesame Street is like a documentary? <laughs> Next he's gonna tell me the Muppets aren't real. Movies might try to teach us and what some fiction authors might try to sell you on. Vampires are not real. Okay? See, what would be more beneficial and what would be enjoyable, not just for Russ's fellow believers, but for my viewers in the skeptic community, is if he instead responded to some of the Christian channels I've seen explaining that vampires are real. Like, it would make more sense for him to respond to a video about that. And then we'd all learn and we'd all benefit and wouldn't it be great? Instead, he's responding to me as if I believe that vampires are real because of the Bible. God forbade the drinking of human blood. Now, some atheists I can already hear on the keyboards out there clacking away. Yeah, but didn't, didn't, didn't Jesus, you know, during the Last Supper say that this is my body? Russ, buddy, nobody's clacking away. There's no comments. I feel like a bit of a bitch. <laughs> Body and blood. Sim Actually, I think I have license to be a little bit of a bitch because he was homophobic. He was homophobic in general and specifically about me. So maybe I get a little bit of leeway to be kind of mean. Symbolically. We're not actually drinking blood. <laughs> it's great. He's got a little bit of a, like a Jim Carrey look, but Jim Carrey at his least um with it grape juice or wine depending on where you go to church okay and the body is just wafers why are you telling it what tell catholics have this conversation with a bunch of catholics not with us we don't believe in this me and my audience don't believe in this what are you talking about why are you telling this to us this is a waste of time so you can buy like bibles bible supply stores there's a whole bunch of different things that we do and yeah, it's literally just either grape juice or wine. We're not actually drinking blood, folks. It is symbolic, okay?
It is symbolic representation of the of what Jesus. You only have to say it once, man. Maybe we've just cracked why he has to do a multiple part series on one of my videos because he says every point five times over. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Tears the bread and he hands it to the actual Catholic, transformed by a man named I did not learn blood. So I'm not actually drinking my own blood by choice. It's another time. By what? choice. Can demons leave hell to torment people? Why can you leave your house to buy milk? Demons can live full lives, okay? Let's not discriminate. Um, okay. Not my strongest joke in the video. I'll admit that. <sighs> you okay, man? What's he doing? Sometimes I get someone complain that I, uh, I edit too much. I think sometimes I do. Um, I'm used to making like montages and, and show reels and stuff where you really cut the fat and sometimes I overcut the fat. When you get really used to hearing like you've uh, worked with a video for so long, you know all the words, especially when it's someone like me who can get a bit excited and talk quite fast, uh, you can overdo it. But then I watch stuff like this and I'm like, why didn't he edit that out? <laughs> why are we sitting watching him go, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, like what? I don't understand. I think he might be flipping through a Bible, that would be my guess. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will s secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with their stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on the ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. Um, basically that um yes please a point that satan is pretty much um yes the lord of this world so um you know it kind of happens that way he he is allowed to run free on this world but so are angels we have guardian angels that that help to try to protect. of course he believes in guardian angels protect us okay I have no fucking idea what any of this has to do with what I just said. Oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> Moon hoaxers. That was it. In response to my joke about let's not discriminate, demons can live full lives, he read a passage about false prophets and how God will send... You know, God, God won't spare you if he didn't even spare angels. And then he was like... The devil runs this world. And that was it. That had not... Am I crazy? What have I missed? That had nothing to do with what just... That was like a complete non sequitur, right? That felt insane to me. <laughs> These are about the only points that I agree with her on. If Put Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon, who took his photograph? Is it another American bullshit story to mislead the world? <laughs> My darling, I believe you're thinking of a fabulous photo of Buzz Aldrin. Well, actually, if we just go back to this just a little bit here, um... My darling, I Thanks for showing that twice. <laughs> I believe you're thinking of a fabulous photo of... Um, Neil Armstrong did take his photograph. Look at the visor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Literally, in the visor, the guy standing in the middle of the photograph in the visor is Neil Armstrong. That's, that's what I said. That's the point I was making. That's what, that's what I said. This is a photo of Buzz Aldrin taken by Neil Armstrong. But the man in the photograph here is Buzz Aldrin. In fact, you can actually see right here where it says... I just, yeah, I just said that. I said, look at this fabulous photograph of Buzz Aldrin taken by Neil Armstrong. Except I did it in fucking 10 seconds. I'm not fucking circling the houses 
spending 10 minutes pausing a video saying my exact point just to labor my point for is e aldrin and if you zoom it in if you go find this thing it's called visor shot if you go find this photograph and you zoom in on you will see that it says e aldrin yeah okay and there was a guy who like went in and <coughs> took this um there was a special effects artist who took this photograph and unwrapped it okay to give us a f that would be visual effects not special effects common mistakes okay full 360 degree view of the moon so you can actually see the shadow here okay is this shadow here it's a little different because of perspective okay the earth is here this is the lunar lander this is neil armstrong and here's buzz aldrin it's no set folks they actually took this on the moon agreed and thanks for expanding upon my point I feel like it was a little bit extraneous but we agree. High five. Okay. So, the only way that you see photos of... I thought he was done. He's still going on this one. Neil Armstrong, okay, is if you watch the actual footage from the cameras that were placed on on the actual, um, like there was one... Um... Let's skip ahead. Yeah, because uh, Neil Armstrong was the principal photographer, which... It's the point that I made in this video. So, well done me. I don't understand why you do a 40 minute video debunking a video of mine and then labor like five minutes of just agreeing with my point and saying exactly what I said, but in a longer way. He was also the primary photographer. So it was him See? taking a photo of Buzz Aldrin. And a special shout out to command module pilot, Michael Collins. He very True. rarely gets a name check. If six plus six plus six from the Bible Numerology. is decoded as the year 2022, <coughs> because two divided by three equals not point six six six. I guess I guess what they're trying to say here is is that if there's three sixes, because that's the number of the beast. Some of the oldest Bible texts we have uh, give the number as six one six rather than six six six. Which is kind of interesting, I think. I need to refill my coffee, so you stay there. Russ, you stay there. I'll be back in a minute. You'll probably have made like a 10 hour video about me leaving my seat by the time I get back. <laughs> Let's fucking go numerology. Why would it be 2020? Why would it not be 2222? Why the zero in there? Fuck if I know, man. two divided numerology. by three doesn't make any sense. Every single year with a two in it would be would be end times what the hell are you trying to say here this doesn't make any sense Ugh. does that mean that the end times are here if so what will happen and how long do we have i'll be honest none of that makes sense to me six plus six plus six from the bible six 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 isn't even really the number of the devil and i would know actually she he's not gonna know. like this but we're going to read a couple of passages Okay. Because this is important. People it's very important that you know the number 666 is associated with the devil. Okay, to be fair, to be fair to Russ here, past Emma's a little bit misleading there. The argument which is which is the real number of the devil, of is it 616 or is it 666, doesn't really matter because it's like that was the number associated with the devil at the time. It doesn't it doesn't really matter it doesn't change anything in the passages where they used 616 that was the number in the passages where they used 666 that is the number so fair play he's going to read some things that say 666 is the devil's number don't really care not that interested we've paused on my tits um i just <laughs> i'm just gonna that's what's happened i've acknowledged it let's skim ahead well they're there for a really long time those who are in not true i don't know why it's important like, the whole angel numbers thing, to me, like, it's important if you notice, like, 1111 keeps coming up and, you know, 2222, two, 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 whatever. Sequences of repeating numbers, basically. I don't understand why that would be important, what that would signify, and what you would do. Like, wh why is that important, is my question. And when Russ responds to this video, I expect a thorough and well-researched biblical answer. Thank you very much. True and wait for it all to blow over. I am being attacked by a black magic death hex. Can you help me? I could, but I won't. Why Noah built- 
I'm sorry. Why Noah built Ark in 40 days? <laughs> Why use many word when few word do trick? Cause God tell him to. Actually, no. <gasps> we don't know how long it took Noah to build the Ark. <gasps> Again, we go to scripture, like most people don't. I usually do, Russ. Russ, you've watched loads of my videos. You've seen me cracking open my Bible. Again, this video was uh, comedy. So I was... I, I make joke to do funny. It's quick fire, f humorous, funny response. Not lengthy scholarly answers to stupid questions on Cora. But that's what he's doing, so it's okay. You carry on, man. Um, let me see here. We're gonna have to skip him going through his Bible the again. The ark with rooms, and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark is 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits, its height 30 cubits. All completely impossible, by the way. You, you, you simply cannot... I mean, we know this. People watching my channel know this already, but for Russ and his friends who might be watching, the ark is impossible. It's physically... Logically, completely impossible. There were not enough humans to look after that amount of animals. There was not enough space for that amount of animals unless you start getting into kind and anti-evolution stuff, which is its own problem. We have to accept that as false, so then move on to here. Different kinds of animals need different kinds of flooring, okay? They're going to come out deformed with severe damage. They're all different sizes and shapes. They all require different environments to live in. They require different food sources. Some of them are going to start trying to eat each other. <laughs> Who is removing all the feces? It's not the seven humans on board, that's for sure. Plus the fact that there is no historical evidence for a global flood. Probably there was some local flood that seemed impressive and this story came out of it. Can ghosts know when you can see them? I guess it depends if they're looking in your direction. Is Um Ghost joke. Yes, they can. Happy October, by the way. I haven't hung up my ghosts in the background this time. I should do that soon. But it depends on the type of haunting that you have. He believes in ghosts. He thinks that vampires are ridiculous. If you believe in vampires, especially if you're a Christian, you're a fucking moron, and he's gonna give you the look. Like the Can you fucking believe this shit look? However, ghosts, demons, guardian angels, those are all obviously real, and there are different kinds of hauntings. Russ has got a problem, man. Residual hauntings are, you have to look up something called the stone tape theory. Basically all residual hauntings are, is they're just, when the conditions are right, it's like you press, it's like when you, when you insert the right tape and you, and you press play, okay? And then it plays back. I don't understand, right? So much stuff is like, this is obviously not real, we need to go back to the scripture. But then he's making up stuff about ghosts that is not at all from scripture. Like, that's obviously real. I don't get when people like this, but then he's managed to invent my history and things I've said, so clearly there's something going on. Back, so like, if you record your voice, okay, and then you were um, Intelligent hauntings are hauntings that are actually, um aware of you okay so if you've ever watched ghost adventures a lot of their ha so he likes ghost shows and he believes in ghost shows but that's not scriptural it's not only not evidence-based it's not uh we could have a we could have an hours long discussion on ghosts and the supernatural it's just crazy to me that he's like you think vampires are real well the bible doesn't say so but then when with ghosts it's like oh well this ghost tv show that i like watching says they're real so this is how they explain it what happened to everything by the bible type of haunting it is Bizarre. Jesus Christ actually coming soon. The video game I Am Jesus Christ is due to release towards the end of this year, so fingers crossed. Um, it will take more than a pagan video game to actually convince people that Jesus Christ is coming. Pagan video game? It's a video game about the life of Jesus Christ. There's something about, like, this kind of Christian, this kind of evangelist, and just using the word pagan to mean not my beliefs. This doesn't adhere to my belief system, and therefore it is pagan. That's not what pagan means. Debunking Russ. But, again, as we read in Matthew chapter 24, we're in the birth pangs. It was a joke! It was a joke, Russ, about a video game that's called I Am Jesus Christ. You either laugh or you don't, and you move on with your life. No, you don't. You do a video series debunking it, because you care so much about what this one... Atheist lesbian has to say. 
Is Jesus Christ coming soon? Probably. But the more we try to predict it, the further out it gets. Really? What, Jesus is like a watched pot paradox? Like, Jesus sees you trying to predict dates and is like, well, I'm not coming now. They've said I'm coming on this date, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna push it back. Like, he's like, why would he do that? That doesn't make sense. Isn't it all preordained? Doesn't he have God have this all planned out? That's completely insane, isn't it? Am I crazy, or is that completely crazy? Okay. The more we try to predict it, the more it's put off. Why? So stop trying to predict it and he- Says who? That's not in the Bible. Why does he- He just makes stuff- This is- The more we watch Russ, the more I kind of sympathize a little bit because I feel like he might be the kind of conspiracy theorist that I am familiar with. Everything I believe- This is my dad, right? Everything I believe is completely accurate. Even though the more I talk, the more you see how hypocritical it is and how I don't actually stick to what I've said before and and it some stuff is completely nonsensical, some stuff makes sense via this thing and it doesn't gel together, but I believe that I am right in absolutely everything. So whenever I come to a conclusion, it is 100% accurate and everyone should know that and it should be obvious. I am the smartest guy in the world. Everyone else just doesn't seem to get it, so I better educate them. I think he's that kind of conspiracy theorist, which would explain a bit why he was so certain about things about me that he's just misremembered or made up. Weird. He will come. <laughs> 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 okay. Why did NASA leave astronauts behind when they left the moon? Why didn't they take them back to Earth with them? What? <laughs> Who does it? I. I wish I could talk to this person. Who do they think has been left behind on the moon? Like Buzz Aldrin is still there? Like what do they? What do they mean? Which Apollo mission? Who's who's left behind on the moon? I. I think what they mean by this is is that they they believe that some of the pictures that were taken they don't understand were like um, were like Neil Armstrong taking a picture of Buzz Aldrin and the moon hoaxers have convinced them that like there's somebody on the moon who is taking a picture of Neil Armstrong coming down the ladder for the first time even though in the actual footage that we see you only see that's crazy, but thanks for that explanation, Russ. That's actually quite helpful. Neil Armstrong come down the ladder, and then after he gets on the moon and he plays to myself. Yeah, but we're not gonna. That Mars rover. You only f that little robot. I don't think NASA left anybody on the moon. NASA didn't Do leave anybody on the moon. morticians experience paranormal activity at their work site? Having played the ultra realistic mortuary assistant, I can confirm that. Yes, bodies will jiggle around, shadows will appear, windows will open and close. And if you don't complete your job in time, you'll die. Are there go- Um, okay. So I have a joke about a video game. Are there- Now, allegedly, this series is... Your man plays games. So, he should appreciate my little video game humour. Are there ghosts at mortuaries? Most likely not. Okay. A horror-themed video game called Mortician's Assistant doesn't change that fact. I'm not asserting that this video game is a documentary again. It's a, it's a lot like The Count from Sesame Street. I'm aware that it's a fiction, Russ. <laughs> it's a joke. He just doesn't seem to understand that this is for humour. Well, he does seem to understand, but then while he's making the video, he forgets or pretends that it's not. I just, I don't get what this is. Maybe that's unfair, because I do understand what this is in the context of he responds to lots of my videos. In the context of, oh, I make videos about Emma Thorne. Here's the next video about Emma Thorne. That is the only way it makes sense, and I find that a little bit weird and creepy. Maybe that's my problem and not his, but I, I don't know. Because ghosts haunt where they lived, not where they died. Says who? Says the Bible? Says the the textbooks? Or where their body was interred for a little while, okay? You say but... so. Ghosts at funerals. Depends if there are any who knew the deceased. I... Um... Okay. It's just another little joke so I could put a little ghost, little animated ghost on the screen. Because I love little animated ghosts. 
You know, I don't know what there is to say about this, but there'll be something. Again, depending on the location, ghosts are generally to leave, and 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 it's not attached to that. And I don't, that... I don't need facts about ghosts according to Russ. That's 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 a different video, right? Uh, this is so weird. This is like the more we go, the weirder it gets. This is a very strange character. Died in 1985, and and it. Where is the? You a demon? No. Yes. Do you go. <laughs> Does it? But that, see, I, is that his attempt at a joke? Is that Russ joining in on the joke? And I found that quite funny. So to me, that works as humour. But because for the rest of it, he's approached this by taking everything deadly seriously, even like the Sesame Street bit. I'm like, well, is he joking or is he being serious? Was that really good deadpan? Or does he genuinely think I'm a demon? I can't tell. There's no, there's no context to how he's. I don't know. Does he actually think I'm a demon, or is that him saying yes, he's a demon? Because that would explain a lot. Ghosts watch us. No, I don't think so. It'd be a little bit creepy if they did. I like Where that is one. The sp okay. There's a little ghost so, watching me. <laughs> is the joke. <laughs> Again, depends on the haunting, <laughs> and it depends on what time. <laughs> is in themselves. They're have class then More because they're generally static. Therapist. It's not a job that I knew existed. It is not a physical location, but a different dimension slash vibration. In what universe are the words dimension and vibration equivalent? <laughs> um actually He's going back to the Bible? Thank God, we've not seen it for ages. He's just been ranting about ghosts. Much, much, much later. Oh, fucking hell, man. Cut to the chase. Okay. I don't even care. I'd rather he got a trial of some software and there was a watermark on the video than have all these bits of him being like... <clears throat> Sometimes I leave bits of that in for comedic effect. But again, it's like a couple of seconds and the point is entertainment. I guess Russ wouldn't understand that. Or would he? Is this whole thing full of jokes and I'm just misunderstanding it? I don't understand. When he, Jesus, arrived at the other side in the region of Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were violent. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. Uh-huh. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out of the men and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down into the steep bank, into the lake, and died in the water. Once again, I have to ask, what the fuck did any of that have to do with what we just said? I just said, the question was about uh, our demons from another dimension or vibration. We've talked about the whole dimension thing before. We are all multi-dimensional beings. We are three-dimensional. We perceive four dimensions, I guess, if you include... I don't, we perceive at least three dimensions. Don't, I'm not a physicist. Physicists in the comments, let me know how many dimensions we perceive. <laughs> the point is, we talked about this with the Australian Jesus guy, right? Another dimension is not another i blame i love science fiction i do blame science fiction for this one it's not like a place that stuff lives in it's not like i'm just hopping to another dimension you could use like parallel universe maybe if you wanted to or another universe if you wanted to go into um you know the many worlds interpretation something like that i don't know the dimension thing already doesn't make sense vibration w vibration is this you know like particles vibrate this table vibrates if I shake it. Things can't come from another vibration. They can't live in a vibration. And the idea, like I said, that vibration and dimension are equivalent is nonsensical. What? Does that passage from the Bible about Jesus driving out some demons, how does that relate to what I was saying in, in any conceivable way? What, Russ, what are you doing? What are you, what are you saying here? What does this mean? To Jesus in private and ask you, Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy. He was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? 
He replied, Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. But when they came together in Galilee, he, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed. In I don't know how many people believe that. I would, If I was religious and trying to reckon with that, I would say that was probably a metaphor, because no amount of faith can break the laws of the physical universe. Still don't understand what this has to do with what I was saying. In the hands of man, they will kill him, and on the third day he will raised, be, be raised to life, and the disciples are filled with grief. So, basically, what, what those two stories illustrate, and that's just a couple of the stories out of the Gospels, yeah. is that every once in a while, Jesus, like, pulled back the veil and was like, that's the spirit world. This is where we... No. What are you talking about? He drove out demons. There was no spirit world involved. Jesus didn't pull back the veil. Jesus drove demons that were very much in this world out of their bodies. Or out of their hosts, I suppose. Again, he's just making up what he believes. I'm guessing this is him combining his love of ghosts and ghost hunting and haunting stuff with his love of the Bible to create his own sort of fictional world. And he, because he has this absolute faith in he is always right and what he believes is always right, he's acting like it's obvious. Even though it's only his very specific personal view based on his personal likes. We are, that's the spirit world, okay? It's just behind your own reality. And it's very, very real. What does that mean? It's just behind your own reality? There is no behind reality. What does that mean? That doesn't explain this, they come from another dimension vibration thing at all. It's just another stupid word for it. Okay, if it's not another dimension, it's not another vibration, then it's behind this reality. That makes just as little sense as all the other things. Got it. And that wasn't in those passages that he just read. He's just inferred that using his understanding of the paranormal. This guy's weird. Okay. So, where's the spirit world? It is literally just behind the veil. It's literally just behind the veil. What is the veil, Russ? These are just concepts. These are just words used to describe, you know, a thing that cannot be. It cannot be literally just behind this reality, just behind the veil, because those aren't literal, real things that we can interact with and observe. Hey. Okay. It's literally okay. just behind... The fabric of our reality. Oh, thanks for clearing that up, man. That makes perfect sense. Now, is it another dimension? Probably. Once again, dimension doesn't mean, like, another space you can inhabit. That's not what a dimension is. A dimensions are just a, a unit of, of measurement. It's a way of measuring something, of, of space, of whatever. You can't live in a dimension. If you open up Blender or some piece of 3D software, can you inhabit the y-axis? Are there demons living in the y-axis? Do, do you understand what I'm saying, Russ? I mean, I have this feeling that he's this I am 100% right all the time guy, so I don't think that he would listen to any point I made, so maybe it's not worth even having the conversation. Because our dimension is four. We have length, width, height, and time. Did he say height? Bless him. Okay. Yes, so he understands what dimensions are. We live are. in a three-dimensional universe, and time is the fourth dimension. Where's the spirit world? Somewhere out here. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm okay, tired. real answer. The spirit world is located in the spirit cupboard, where you keep your vodka. If ghosts are real... That's a joke about spirits. Thank you very much. Do they watch us in our most intimate moments? Again? Depending hauntings, hauntings. Depends on the type of haunting. Okay. So that's basically it. Um, Thank so, God. Praise be. You know, I mean, I'm trying to give you answers that I hope will help you understand that, you know, when you listen to people like her, okay? People like she me. She doesn't really know what she's talking Atheist slash lesbians. So I think what he means. Talking about, okay. And they don't know what they're talking about. It's comedy, Russ. It's these are jokes. This is so he knows exactly what he's talking about. He can answer every question put to a 
anyone ever. He has the answers for all of these questions. To be fair to him, stuff like the moon landing, he's clearly read a lot about. And he has a good understanding and a good knowledge. He is in a, a pretty good position to debunk uh, moon landing conspiracies. That's pretty cool. Good job, Russ. But he also just randomly believes all this weird stuff about ghosts that has no basis in reality, that has no basis in fact, in either science or scripture. And he is 100% confident in all of that. You should never listen to me making jokes because my humorous answers to stupid questions that none of you are really asking might not be 100% factually accurate. The count from Sesame Street wasn't really in my Bible, guys. It was editing. And she's trying to make a, make a light of certain types of, you know, things. So, please, don't listen to people like her, okay? When you're talking about these kind of things. <laughs> you have the choice. Okay. I put it to you, commenters. Vote in the comments below. Who would you listen to? Granted, we are biased because we're on my channel. Regardless, I want to hear. Who should you listen to about things like this, which I guess spans everything from NASA stuff to ghosts to scripture? Me or Russ? Vote in the comments. <laughs> Go to the word of God, you know. Go to the word of God. Unless it's about ghosts. And then just watch TV. Watch shitty American ghost shows on TV and take that for granted. <laughs> or, you know, if you're wondering about ghosts in the spirit world, um, you can learn about... He's specific. He's like done the joke that I just made. He's actually saying. He's like, go back to scripture. Or if it's about ghosts, then look elsewhere because scripture doesn't tell us everything we need to know. <gasps> spirit world from Jesus, but ghosts, you probably need to consult a priest or you should probably consult like the Ghost Adventures crew. Because they have about 20 years now worth of, um, worth of material that they can talk about. Because literally... Their, their original documentary came out in 2004, and next... Yeah, he... Oh, this makes me sad. This is just my dad. He watched a compelling documentary about ghosts, so he clearly has become invested in this as a 100% a accurate all-the-time source of information. As accurate as... He's putting this on par with scripture in terms of how to learn about stuff. He saw it, he was like, yep. And that became a solid part of his belief system. I feel sorry for him because it's not, if his brain is wired that way, that's not his fault. At the same time, he's made a 40 minute video debunking my five minutes of comedy on YouTube. So maybe we shouldn't be that sad about it. Next year as of filming this is 2024. And it's phenomenal if you can get a hold of it. It is absolutely eye opening, okay? So anyway, smash that like button, hit subscribe, drop a comment below, let me know what you think of the of this video, um, and, you know, check out some of my other videos. So that's Russ. My friends, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Y'all, I just watched Spree. I want to say 2020 movie. Was it 2020? Might be earlier than that, actually. The movie about the guy who's desperate to go uh, viral, and every time I hear something like, don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, I'm like, I think about that movie where the guy goes on a killing spree to become internet famous. I'm so gonna do a movie recap of that film, because I'm like, kind of, I've been kind of psychologically obsessed with it ever since I watched it. They get the internet and like, streaming culture and like, 4chan culture so spot on. Ah. Uh. Anyway, there's just, there's something funny about just, like, I I said this earlier, it's I feel kind of mean about it, but again, he was homophobic in this video, and therefore I think that grants me, like, one point of meanness. There's something funny about somebody with zero likes and less than 100 subscribers being like, smash that like button, check out my else, you know? Like, I feel like I didn't have the confidence to do that until I already had quite a few people. And even now, I don't go, smash that like button, unless I'm taking the piss. <laughs> But maybe that is just a cultural difference between us. If you enjoyed this video, then uh, subscribe to this channel and, and like this video. Leave your comments down below.
and vote on your favourite information source between me and Russ. <laughs> I hope this doesn't sound too mean. You can see why I don't respond to 99% of videos about me. Because they are so often these just rambly, weird, like, they get me completely wrong and that's kind of irritating. They take my jokes and present them as if they're serious and just like, this is why I wouldn't watch, for example, Flatzoid's like two hour stream about one of my videos. Like th this kind of stuff you just kind of see and you're like, nah. <laughs> with this guy with Russ, it was that I, I wanted to look because A, I thought it was really funny that he debunked an eight minute comedy video and I wanted to see how that went and that did provide a lot of entertainment. I'm happy with that. But also it was just the sheer volume of videos he's made about me. The fact that he has made like multi-part series about singular videos of mine is sort of interesting, bordering on concerning that drew me in to actually take a look. And also I kind of thought he probably wants me to respond to these. He's, gonna, he's making all these videos and not getting any views on them. Maybe this would be nice for him. Maybe this is what he wants. Yeah, leave your thoughts down below. <laughs> Once again, I am going to be at uh, MCM this month. Check out the community tab for details. I'm on the website. I got a meet and greet on the Saturday. MCM London, Excel Centre. You can buy tickets online. My meet and greet's 3.30 to 4.30. Put it in your schedule. Come say hi. I have a feeling I'll be lonely. <laughs> If you like what I do and you want to help out, you can become a channel member. Channel members get comment priority, I will always check your comments, and you get some silly little emotes. The best way to support this channel is via the Patreon, you can look there for some exclusive videos, longer cuts, uh, without ads of some content, little videos of me singing, some puppet stuff, you know, me kind of stuff, just more of it. <laughs> if you want to say hi live on the internet, you can follow me on Twitch at Emma Little Duck. I stream usually three times a week, this is a bit Bitty? It's a little bitty. <laughs> this is a busy time of year for me, so um, I might miss uh, the occasional stream. But generally, if you follow me over there, that's a good place to uh, find me when I'm live and say hi and bully me for being bad at video games. Likewise, if you enjoy gaming content, you can follow me at Little Duck Gaming on YouTube. There's wholesome stuff. There's spooky, scary stuff. I'm going to play a lot of horror games this month because I freaking love October. I love Halloween. And check out Emma Thorne backstage. If you, like the majority of you, because you are across various ponds, if you aren't going to MCM, I will be vlogging it as usual. So if you subscribe to Emma Thorne Backstage, then you won't miss those videos along with other stuff. That's where I open my PO Box mail. A big shout out then, and a thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. <laughs>